hi everyone and welcome back to not another bonsai channel well you just caught me in the middle of looking at this norway spruce sapling and you know there's not really much of a tree here to work with but it did get me thinking how can you make a bonsai out of something that looks like this So this little collection of trees was uh, kindly sent to me from Dan over at the Bonsai Project. So yeah, thanks again for this, Dan. I really do appreciate this. And uh, he actually sent this to me uh, beginning of last year, of 2023. I will put a link to that video just up here. Uh, that was the unboxing video that I did. And uh, really since that video, all I've done is just left this in this pot just to grow and develop over time and just see what it becomes. But I think today is the day where we can take a look at this, try to finally make a decision as to how we're going to style this uh, Norway spruce and really put it on its first steps towards becoming a bonsai tree. So if we just take a closer look at this part, we can see we have a couple of weeds, just get them out, just pull them out nicely. That's that one. Oh, that one's come with it, which is good. So we can see we also have two more trees. Now these are sycamores. Now down here in the south of England, these grow by the millions. The seeds germinate everywhere and they just sprout up everywhere well, around the garden and around the local area. So uh, it's not like I necessarily need any more of these, but we can see they are beginning to break bud. So maybe, as soon as we have them, let's try to put them into some kind of a, a bonsai display and get them going as little trees too. So the big question is, after a year in this pot, how well will these come out? So let's just tip it over just like so. So we can see the roots are slightly tangled. Uh, let's try and get this sycamore out first. Just tease it out gently. Tease it out, tease it out, tease it out. See, there's a bit of a bit of sand, almost like clay. That must have been where these were originally growing. And Dan's just pulled them out of the ground and planted them up into a little container. But yeah, plenty of root on that. That's a nice looking little tree. Plenty of root. So yeah, we can use that in a little planting. Just put that to the side. We have the smaller sycamore just hit. Not quite as much root on that one, but very healthy little tree. Let's take a closer look at this Norway maple. Again, plenty of roots. Not many fine roots on this tree. There are not many fine roots at all. So that's not a good sign. Um, but if we get this planted up into so much Nice and free drain and bonsai compost, we should be able to grow this on as a little tree. See, I'm quite surprised that this doesn't have more root on it. Considering the growth up top, it looks very healthy trees, put out a lot of you know fresh needles and with only that amount of root. I mean that's not a bad thing. I did want to try to get it into this bonsai pot, and with that small amount of root, it doesn't look as though we're gonna to have to do that much by way of root pruning. But before I did that, I did just want to Try to put some movement into this tree. We can see it's a very straight trunk. We have a low branch down there and then all of this foliage up top. So what if we went quite radical and put some really weird twisted bends into this tree? I think it would give it much more interest and well, a whole lot more character. And what I like about spruces is very similar to pine trees. The trunks are very flexible. You can really bend these and distort these into all different types of shapes and wacky designs and yeah just really put a whole load of character into these trees so before i applied any wire to this tree i did just want to wrap it with some adhesive bandage or vet tape as some other people call it just to protect the trunk and uh, stop any wire marks or stop the wire from digging in again it's uh, not a, exactly a necessity you don't need to do it I haven't done it on other trees, but I just thought with this tree, because it's so young and I do hope it's going to grow and put on a whole load of new growth, this might just be a good way of protecting it from wire scars. So all we're going to do is cut a nice long strip, just like so. Let's get my pruners just here. And we gently wrap this around the tree. So to do this, all I'm going to do is just start at the bottom, just like so, wrap it around 
starting off is a tricky bit, but once you get going, it becomes quite easy. So just wrap it around. There we go. We have a starting point, and then just gently wrap this around the trunk. Now we do have that low branch, so what we're going to have to do is try to navigate this. That's best to do that. We go around again, like so, and then if we go above it, like that. What I might do is just snip in here, like that, just to give me a bit of space to wrap that round, that branch, like that. And then we can go around a little bit more. And then, yeah, go above that branch, that's good. And just keep going around, keep going around, all the way to the top. Basically, you just want to wrap this around the area that you're planning to put the wire. So you can see, probably not going to put wire right up here. So what we can do is cut off this access just in here. And then what you can do is cut in here, cut the tape in half, like that. Wrap this piece around. And then this is kind of the fiddly bit. So I want to tie this off in a little knot. Just like so, tie it nice and tight, and then that will keep the tape on on the tree. That's it. And then these excess pieces we don't need. Cut them off just like so. So now with the trunk of the tree all bandaged up, now we can apply some wire. So the wire that I was planning on using was uh, some quite heavy gauge wire because I did want to put some heavy, heavy bends into this. Now this is just old wire that I've taken off trees in the past. I do like to try and save my wire where I can. I'm not really a fan of cutting it off if I, I can help it. I mean, on some trees you, you have to, but if I can avoid it, I like to keep it because it can come in for other projects. And of course, if you can reduce your waste and do your bit of recycling, then that's always a good thing. So all I'm gonna do, I don't really have anything to attach this to. And I did really want to put wire from the bottom right up to where these branches uh, start at the top. So all I'm going to do is just put a little loop in this and just wrap that round. It's not ideal and ideally what you would do is stick the end of this into your soil and then wrap it around from that point. But because this isn't planted up in a pot just yet, we can't do that. So we're just going to have to make do with that for now. And then I'm just going to wrap this wire all the way around. Now, I know some people out there will say that you need to have these loops a similar distance and they are right. To some extent you do. And if you do, and the closer you have them together, the more of a bend you'll be able to put into a trunk. So if we just come around, I think that's about half a centimeter. We just keep going around, keep going around. So now we come to that branch. So we want to loop this just above that branch like that. And then keep going around keep going around all the way to the top. Now this is where I tied off my bandage, which is fine because the, the wire will hold that in. We keep going around, there's a needle that's trapped in there. And we've made it to the top. And then just with some wire cutters, you can cut off the excess, just like so, and then we we'll keep that little piece of wire. You never know, it might come in for a future project. So just to cover the little hole in the bottom of the pot here, I'm just going to use some of this black nylon mesh. It's going to cut a little piece, just like so. It doesn't need to be too big. And then that will cover the hole in the bottom of the pot. Right now, I'm not one for usually wiring the screen into the bottom of the pot. Reason being is that I can just take some soil, put that in the pot like so, and that screen isn't going to go anywhere. So now with a little bit of soil just in the bottom, I might put a little bit more, just like that. And then with that, we can just take our tree and position it in. Now the question is front, back, side to side. Now with a young tree like this, I don't necessarily think it makes a hole 
a lot of difference, you know, which side is your front. I mean, if you're really pernickery, you can do that, but this tree has a long way to go before it becomes a, you know, fully fledged bonsai tree. But you know, we start. We want to start it off in the right way. So I think, ideally, it's nice if you have that branch coming off to the side. So I think we'll have it somewhat like that, and then we can bend some wacky designs in with the wire. So if we just hold the tree in place, we can just get some more soil from the tub, put that around, just like so. There aren't that many roots on this tree, but even so, you know, we will poke it in, make sure the soil does have good contact with all of the roots. And of course, by being in a much more free draining bonsai uh, soil medium, hopefully those nice fine roots should develop and this tree should go on, become a very nice tree and put on some nice growth for us in the future. So let's just go around a little bit more with some soil a little bit more. Right, so now the interesting bit, putting some movement into the tree. So uh, how wacky shall we go? Well, we have this branch here. Now, ideally that does want to be on the outside of a bend. So I think straight off the bat, it means that we are gonna have to bend this in that kind of a direction. Now, with this coming out of the pot so far to the the right hand side, maybe we can bend it a little bit lower down, like so. And then this is going straight up, which isn't ideal. We kind of have to bend that round and then maybe bring this forward slightly and around. Maybe taking it round in this direction, like so, really putting an interesting bend and curve in this. Um, I'm not really liking the idea of this branch going straight up, so I know I could put wire on that, but I'm thinking I might bend this in this direction and let's bend that round and swing it round like so and do something a little bit like that. I'm liking that, that looks pretty good. Yeah, so I'm not really liking the straightness of this branch, so I've just taken a little piece of one mil wire I think what I do is I don't have anywhere to anchor this off. So I'm going to have to cheat a little bit and wrap that round like that, just below where we've put that thicker wire. And then what I can do is come around like so and wrap this round. Now, this is a skinnier branch. We're not going to put as wacky a bends in this branch. So we don't have to worry too much about the cohesive or the vet tape. But much like before, we're just going to go round and round and round and go right to the tip because, of course, with a, a trunk that looks, well, this this interesting, this branch has to follow a certain level of, of uh, well, bending and <laughs> a similar style. So I think what I do is I bend the branch out like so. Maybe we bend it round this way and maybe go around in that direction. Maybe bend this a little bit further around and bend that around like that. So yeah, that's like that. Yeah, I'm liking that, that looks really good. I like how it now fills the width of the pot. So you have the canopy over here, you have this branch over here. So it really makes it look as though it fills the pot. That's excellent. Now I know some people may be saying that I didn't wire the tree into the pot and that's because I like to use stones. So all I'm gonna do is just use this pebble here I'm just going to slide that in here like so and then that will hold the tree in place in the pot just until those fine roots start growing and the roots establish themselves in the pot. Once they do, this tree is going to hold itself in this pot just fine. So we've uh, worked on the Norway spruce, but what about those little sycamores? So these are the two sycamores. We have one small one and one large one. So I think uh, let's start with the large one. So just looking at the root plane where all of these roots load down, the, the roots or the main tap root kind of comes down, goes all the way around and then divides into two. Now, where did we want our root plane to be? I mean, if we did it here, we'd have this long, this long trunk here, which actually what I think I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in here and cut all of these off because I have an idea. 
you know how sometimes when you're looking at pebbles and uh, small stones, it, sometimes you find a pebble that has a hole going all the way through it? Well, I have one here, and I thought it might be quite an interesting project or idea to maybe thread this through and have this as a tree through a stone. Rather than a root over rock or a tree over a rock, we can do a, a tree through a stone. Right, so to do this, we'd have to, because the hole goes in here and it comes out here, we'd have to work out where is our bottom and where is our top. Now we could do it that way, and we have the tree coming out of here, or we could have this as the bottom and have the tree coming out of here. Personally, I think having it like that is better because then the trunk can come up the side of this part of the stone. But let's uh, thread the tree through and see what it looks like. So go through there like so, and through there like so. And it'd be something along the lines of that. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite liking that. I think there's plenty of room in this hole for the tree to grow. And what will happen is over time, as the tree gets bigger and bigger and thicker and thicker, it will kind of fuse in with the stone and really blend in. And you can imagine, you know, as the, as the tree starts to grow, it's really going to kind of uh, fuse itself to the stone. Uh, yeah, it could be a fantastic effect. I've never seen anybody do this. So... Yeah, this could be a really interesting project. So for the time being, I plan to put this tree just into this nine centimeter plant pot. So if we're gonna do that, we don't need all of these long roots on the bottom. So I think as there are plenty of fine feeder roots coming off of this big root, I think we are safe to cut this in there, just like so. With this long root coming off here, and cut that in there, just like so. And then just around on the other side, we have this long root just coming off here, Again, doesn't need to be quite as long. I think what I'm going to do with that one is cut that just on that bend, just there like so. Now I already have a little bit of soil in the bottom of this pot, so it's now just simply a case of taking this, this arrangement and tucking these roots into this pot and wedging that down in there and then just backfilling around that stone with the soil just to hold that in place. All right, so we wanted to tuck this tree into the edge of this stone. So if we just hold that in place like so, you can get some soil and just pack this around. And then if we just bring back the chopstick, you can just poke that in, make sure that all of the roots have good contact with the soil. And that I think is that little tree all planted up. Well, we just have this uh, smaller one to plant up and I think I have the perfect home for this little tree. Now this little planting here is uh, a little sycamore forest and I had so many little uh, saplings or seedlings of sycamore that I wasn't sure what to do with them. I didn't really want to grow them all on as, in, as individual bonsai trees. So I just put them together in this part, just making somewhat of a little forest. And you can see I have a couple of shells of toy cars in here just to kind of give the impression of an abandoned, um, almost like a scrap yard, I guess. You have two cars in here. This one... That this, this tree just here is growing through the windshield. So of course, as this uh, tree matures and gets bigger, it's gonna fuse in with this car. This one's just laying here loose. But I did think that soon as though this is a sycamore forest, we might be able to plant this tree in this forest, maybe just about there, like that. So I didn't want to disturb the sycamore forest too much when it comes to putting this tree in. So I thought all I do is just use my chopstick, just make a little hole, just where I would like this tree to be. And much like any maple, you know, sycamores are very resilient. Once, you know, once they're in and they're happy, they put roots out and grow just fine. I mean, they, you know, th th these grow so easily around here in the south of England that I really think there'll be no problem at all with this tree establishing itself in this little forest planting. And now we have that little hole made. We can just take the roots using the chopstick. Uh, kind of difficult to do this <laughs> where you can still see it, but hold that like so just poke the roots into the hole not the most ideal way of planting up a tree but as i say these are sycamores and once they find their way they will find their way and that tree can just go in there like so and then what we do is just gently press the soil around it just tucking it in and i think with that just position that a little bit better and we'll leave that to do its thing and grow. 
So it's all looking very nice. We have a Norway spruce wired into a really funky looking design. We have a sycamore growing through a stone. Never seen that done before, but that's going to look really interesting. And we've added a, a new tree to the sycamore forest. Well, thanks for joining me on this one. Kind of a fun one. Just uh, showing you sort of like how to's of how to do different projects. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, stick with the channel because I will show you updates on how all of these little projects go and how they, you know, how they grow uh, throughout the upcoming year and well on into the future. And I think with that, guys, I will bring this little video to an end. So, yeah, thanks for joining me today. And as always, have a great day. Take it easy. And I will catch you on the next one.